YouTube and possibly Instagram. I know I said this last time, but this time it really is official. It is, as of the day I am filming this, which is March 18th, it is one month till the glass blower is released. And so we are continuing with our series about Louisville and the inspirations behind the glass blower because as you know by now, part of the glass blower takes place in my hometown of Louisville, Kentucky. And today we are going to be talking about the seal block. Now the reason it has taken me so long to get the video of the seal block out is because, are you ready? Drum roll please. <laughs> so I finished the illustration of the seal block from the glass blower. So it's, it's honestly, it's not my best work. Um, I'm not great at layouts. People are my expertise. Spaces are not, especially man-made spaces. If I'm gonna draw a space at all, like an organic space, like a landscape, I, I can do that. And this was made even harder by the fact that the seal block is a real place. Like sometimes when I do layouts, I can cover up my mistakes with like, extra details and decor that I can put in there. But this time I was committed to what it really looks like. So there wasn't a lot of like room to get by on. In the glass blower, Pasha, Fina, and Cicada find themselves at the seal block in Louisville, Kentucky. That's the hotel where they stay at. The seal block is a luxury hotel that was built in 1905 by two Bavarian immigrant brothers, Otto and Louis Seelbach. The Seelbach was and is still known for its opulent elegance. Modeled after the decadent hotels of Vienna and Paris, the Seelbach transports its guests to a world of beauty and extravagance. The hotel boasts wood and marble imported from France, the West Indies, and Germany. And Italy, forgot that one. There are chandeliers, Persian rugs, and just about every beautiful luxury you can think of. One of the most iconic features of the Seelbach is the grand staircase, loaded in the lobby and Featured here in this illustration. What I find most impressive about the Grand Staircase and something I failed to successfully capture in my artwork here is these Art Deco looking gilded railings. It's so ornate. It screams Art Deco. It screams extravagance and grandeur. I love it. I did them so bad. Why, why is this easy for me? And this, this is like torture. I get so frustrated doing that symmetry and line work. Below the building is a room called the Rathskeller, which is basically a subterranean ballroom. It is believed to boast the largest collection of Rookwood pottery in the world. It is covered in this stuff. And there is all this really interesting decor and artwork. If you look at uh, the walls, there are these murals. And something that's very odd and something that a lot of people consider creepy is that there are just all these symbols taken from different uh, societies and like there's Masonic symbols, there's heraldic symbols, there's alchemy symbols and uh, stuff from the Zodiac. And that is kind of a weird mashup. You would think that doing something like that, mixing all those elements would be considered tacky like i'm not saying that it is tacky i'm just saying like for that time period especially it seems like people would have been like oh why it's just it is very odd and then there are these pelicans that you can find all around the room crowded in a circle some people think it's kind of like some kind of weird creepy paranormal thing because the pelican something the pelican does is it like stabs itself in the chest when it has babies. And for a long time, people thought that it drank its own blood or that it fed its blood to its young. But actually, I think I read this at some point where what they're actually doing when they do that is they're pulling out the feathers for the nest, but people thought they're just like, eh, I must bleed. Okay, sorry, that was really weird. <clears throat> Anyways. Now, during World War II, the Raskeller was turned into a USO for soldiers uh, staying over at Camp Taylor. But we're actually gonna go back to that in a second. Over the years, this extravagant hotel has played host to a number of famous guests. But the best celebrity stories are undoubtedly all about the renowned patrons of the 1920s. In the 1920s, Louisville flourished. Every illicit and tantalizing activity that you can associate with the 1920s, Kentucky had, baby. Bourbon, tobacco, gambling, racetracks, a famous steamboat that you could ride down the river. Churchill Downs, of course, is one of the most famous racetracks in the world. It is the crown jewel of the city, like for real. The Kentucky Derby Festival itself is like two weeks of drinking, gambling, and games. All that lead up to the run for the roses. 
That being said, the Kentucky Derby Festival didn't really begin until 1935, but still, you get it. It's like the whole culture. Not to mention, Kentucky was sitting on 80% of the country's supply of bourbon and whiskey. F. Scott Fitzgerald, the author of The Great Gatsby, was said to be a regular at the Seelbach. And it's easy to see how his experiences at the hotel inspired him. As a young soldier stationed at Camp Taylor, F. Scott Fitzgerald would don his fine Brooks Brothers suit and head on over to the Seelbach in Louisville. Fans of The Great Gatsby remember that Gatsby himself was stationed at Camp Taylor, and it is there in Louisville that he met Daisy Fay. Now, if you've watched my video on George Remus, and if you haven't, click here. And you're familiar with the legendary meeting between F. Scott Fitzgerald and the King of the Bootleggers. Supposedly, George Remus, the self-made man who bought up a lot of drugstores, was the inspiration for Gatsby himself. Remus was known for his ridiculously extravagant parties held at his gi insanely ginormous, luxurious mansion. It is said that he lit guest cigars with $100 bills, and then he gave out things like diamond stick pens and cars as party favors. Sounds a bit familiar, don't you think? F. Scott Fitzgerald even went so far as to base a hotel in the book on the seal box. Now, a lot of people get this mixed up. In fact, I did myself. I thought he really did say it was a seal box, but no. He named the hotel in Louisville the Mobach. And that is where Daisy and Tom get married. George Remus was not the only famous bootlegger to frequent the seal box hotel. It also played host to Lucky Luciano, Dutch Saltz, and Al Capone himself. Al Capone's adventures at the Seelbach are nothing short of legendary. He was such a regular that they put a mirror up in the private poker room in the Oak Room so he could make sure that no one was cheating at cards. Although I would think that means that like he himself is cheating. Any of the guys like who played him at poker, like were they just like flatters? Just like, oh yeah, Capone, you win again. How'd you know? whatever. And if the police showed up, there was a button down in the lobby that they would push that would automatically close the doors to the poker room to warn the gangsters that the police were there and they better get all their money off the table. And if Capone was there, he wasn't messing around. There was a secret tunnel for these gangsters to escape the police. It literally led them under the city through concrete pipes where they could then go and like hide in other buildings. But like literally, they, you should totally like look up videos on this and pictures. Like it's just like something you'd see in a movie. It's like creepy secret tunnels. And I really, really wish that Nancy Drew would make a game based on that. I guess it would be a lot like the ghost dogs moonlight, like, but whatever. I really like Nancy Drew games. And so guys, that is all I have for you today about the Seelbach Hotel. Kind of a short video, but still, I hope it was very informative. Like I said, the glass blower comes out in one month. Uh, you can pre-order the ebook on Amazon. Um, unfortunately, Amazon does not currently let you pre-order physical copies for some reason, but it will be available on the 18th. And if you haven't, definitely go check out The Breadwinner and read that first. It is the first book in the series. And as always, you can support me on Patreon. You can follow me on Instagram. And I will see you guys next time. Bye!